Welcome, this is the Chapter 3 Review Packet Homework Solutions. Here we're going to be covering Part four and part 3 and Part 4 of the solutions. All right? So before we start with Part 3 or Part 4, we have to understand uh, the four um, properties or theorems that come out of the parallel line and transversal line. So here we have the image here. We know line P and line Q are parallel and it is cut by this transversal line which is called T. It gives us all these angles. Angle 1, angle 2, angle 3, angle 4, angle 5, angle 6, angle 7, and angle 8. We are going to see how they are related together. Okay. So the first one, corresponding angle theorem. This is when angle 2 and angle 6 are the same and angle 3 and angle 7 are the same. Right? So if you would like to see this in paint, I could bring it up for you. Okay? So uh, what parallel uh what the corresponding ones are from when you slide the line. So let me show you. If you slide this line on top right here, okay, 1 will match up with 5. So let me show you here. One, oops, one will match up with five, right? Two will match up with six, right? Three will match up with seven, and four will match up with eight, all right? Now those are all your corresponding angles. We call that the clone angle. Next, it is the interior angle. Right, three and six and four and five. Let me show you that one. Right, the best part about this one is you get to see right three and six. So three is right here. Then it goes across to six. Then you have four and five. Okay, do you see how it's crossing here or switching? And it it is on the inside. What I mean by the inside is it is between the P and Q. Let me show you. This is the inside. All right. Okay, that's that's inside, so we call that the switch inside angle. So it's also called the alternate interior angles, right? One eight and two seven are called your alternate exterior angles. I'm gonna show you that, right? Make that orange. Okay, one and eight. Oops, one and eight, as well as two and seven. Right? Do you see how it's crossing on the outside? This is the outside here, right? That's your outside. Okay. All right, that is your outside. This is also your outside. In here, that's your inside. Okay. Inside. That's your outside. Alright, so we call that. It switches on the outside. That's called your alternate exterior angle. Your consecutive are when it forms a inside linear pair. What do I mean by the inside linear pair? Let's see. Okay. It is the line that is made right here from 3 to 5. These two add up to 180 and 4 to 6 adds up to 180. Those are your consecutive interior angles. All right. All right. So let's look at the problem now. All right, number one, three and eight. Do you see how it's across from each other and it's on the outside? So we call that the alternate exterior angle. Okay. Next, we have three and five. Those are on the inside. All right. So we call those your consecutive interior angles. One and eight. One and five. That looks like they're cloned of their spot. So that's your corresponding angle. Okay. Right, so here I'm just going to give you the, the you the answer now. Just look at your review sheet to see its spot. Four and eight is called your corresponding. Two and six is your corresponding. Four and five is your alternate interior. Two and seven is your alternate exterior angle. Angle three and six are your alternate interior angle. Angle four and six is your consecutive interior angles. Three and seven is your corresponding angle. All right. Let's do the next one, right? We are seeing it's if they are vertical. Um, it's the same thing here. Let's look at seven and six. We say those are vertical angles. Let's see if that is correct. All right. Let's see that. Hold on. Give me a moment. 
to grab the image so you can see it. Okay. All right. So uh, we are looking for seven and six. Okay. All right. Let's see if seven and six are vertical angles or not. Vertical angles is when they are across from each other. Okay. Let's see that. Okay, we see here seven and six. Mm -hmm. Are they across from each other? Seven's right here, six is right there, seven's right here, six is right here. Yep, they are vertical angles. Let's look at the next one, F five and seven. They say those are linear pair. Five is right here, seven's right here. Yep, they're side by side. So yes, those are linear pair. What about one four? One's right here, four is right here. Looks like they're across from each other. That means they are vertical, ang vertical angles. That's correct. What about six and three? We have six here, we have three here. Oops, look, it's crossing. That should be alternate interior angle, right? A five, what about five and six? Five's right here, six is right here. Whoop, it seems like that forms a line. So that must be they are linear pairs, right? Seven and eight, linear pair. Seven and three are corresponding angles. Five and eight are they are vertical angles, right? Next, we are just given the multiple choice. It's the same image from before, okay? We are using this. The first one, one and five, one's right here, five's right here. Well, looks like they match up, right? They're both right here and right here. They look like they're clones from each other. That should be corresponding, All right? Two and eight, what about two and eight? Four and eight, I mean. Four's right here, eight's right here. They're in the same spot, so we call that corresponding. Okay, two and seven, alternate exterior, four, alternate interior, five, six and four is your consecutive, and two and six is your corresponding. All right, let's look at part four now, okay? Part four, it says to find the angle measurement, okay? So we could do this multiple ways. I'm gonna show you two methods, okay? How are the angles related? In this case, we review this. Okay, four, right? So in our image, uh, this angle and this angle looks like they're crossing on the inside, right? They're switching on the inside. We call that your alternate interior angles. Here's the equation is right next, right below it. All right, so we call this the alternate exterior angle. These two are the same based on that theorem. So we solved x equals to 46. If you don't like that method, I'm gonna show you the baseball method. Okay, this is where you slide this piece on top of this piece. Okay, we have this piece, right? So the X was in home first, second. So it looks like right here, it was in second. Then 46 is right here. The fract that are across from each other means they're vertical angles. There you go. You see how you're just sending up into this weird four square box? We call it the baseball method because the parallel lines slide on top of each other. Next, again, how is x, this is number four, how is x and 68 related? x and six are related because they make a linear pair. These are your uh, consecutive interior angles. So x plus 68 equals to 180. Subtract 68 to both sides, you get x equals to 112. All right, baseball method, same thing. x was right here on the bottom, 68 was up there to the left, they're, vertic they're linear pairs, so they add up to 180. So x is equal to 112 because you subtract 68 to both sides. All right, so x equals 112 because they are linear pairs. All right, so here we have the solutions for 2, 3, 5, and 6, right? x is, sorry, this should be 111 because they are corresponding. 3 and 7 are also corresponding, so x equals to 175. 3 and 37 looks like they're alternate exterior, so they're the same. This is also alternate exterior, so that's also x equals to 58. 7. 7 and 26, they are related by corresponding, so x is equal to 26. x and 31 for number 8, they also look like they are corresponding, so x equals to 31. 9. They're side by side, they make a linear pair, so x plus 113, so the answer should be 67, correct? 10, 
x and 132 those are across from each other they're alternate interior angles so x equals to 132 x and 96 for 11 they're alternate exterior angles so x equals to 96 12 this is alternate interior angles so x equals to 83 all right so that is your 1 through 12 and that finishes up part 3 and part 4 of the review packet solutions okay